Hi everyone. So in this video, we uh, have a brief discussion of two strategies for basically solving the problem of capturing long-term dependencies. And uh, the motivation is, as we discussed before, is that in order to capture long-term dependencies, you need the uh, gradient of the cost with respect to the output at a certain time step to be sensitive to the state of the network and the input at far away time steps, right? But the gradient would rely on uh, 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 an exponential of the weight or the weight raised to a certain power and that power depends on the difference in time steps or in, uh, in time step indices between uh, the, the desired point that you want to be sensitive at and your current output, right? So if we, uh, if the weight raised to a large power doesn't vanish, then there is a problem that the error in that weight or any imperfection in that weight will actually also uh, propagate and, uh, and uh, kind of explode uh, by the time you reach the far away time step, right? So there really is no clear way of how to optimize uh, the training of recurrent neural networks for capturing long-term dependencies. And because of that, one of the strategies or the first strategy that we will discuss today is called skip connections in time, right? So before we discussed skip connections in terms of the network itself, right? So if I have a hidden to hidden recurrence where you have deep, uh, a, a deep uh, network in, uh, between H of T and H of T plus one, then you could have a skip connection so that you minimize the shortest path. That we discussed before, the shortest path between H of T and H of T plus one. But now we are talking about skip connections in time, right? So I might have a skip connection over five time steps that connects H of T to H of T plus five, right? And then at H of T plus five, I have a connection coming from H of T plus four and H of T itself, right? So you could have th that kind of skip connections that basically make part of the network operate at a larger time scale or a coarse, a more coarse time scale, right? So when we do that, we allow for capturing these long-term dependencies, right? Uh, without the optimization difficulty. And we also minimize the shortest path, right? So if the, if the length of the skip connection is D, right? Then uh, the shortest path between the first time step and the last time step in the sequence becomes tau, where tau is the length of the sequence, tau over D instead of tau, right? But there are of course, there is a lot of engineering choices that you uh, need to make when choosing to employ skip connections, like how many of them and what's the delay D for each of them, right? What's the length of the skip connection? And in order to do, so every time you make such a choice, you are encoding or imposing a prior belief on the network about how the function should look like or what kind of temporal correlations what's the scale of the temporal correlations that it should capture. So if such information is clear from the application that you should capture, for example, temporal correlations every time step, as well as every 10 time steps, as well as every 100 time steps, if the semantics of the application allows you to do that, then this is a good choice. But in general, you might not have access to such information, right? And uh, another limitation other than not having access to such information is that there is a restriction when using skip connection is that the, the D has to be an integer, right? So the length of the skip connection has to be an integer, right? So to handle these two problems, there is a more general solution, which is basically to employ what are known as leaky units. And the state for a leaky unit, a time step T, is given by the state at time step t minus one, the same as the traditional uh, 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 hidden to hidden recurrence, times a factor, right? So a self connection. And that self connection, inspired by the same idea that we discussed in the last video about echo state networks and the spectral radius, that self connection, at least initially, should be close to one, right? 
so this is the alpha and then one minus alpha times the new value right so basically that allows you to if alpha is one you are not taking the new input if alpha is zero you are only taking the new input so the smaller the alpha the faster you forget previous information the larger the alpha the slower you forget past information and you are less sensitive to new incoming inputs right so that alpha could be an uh, could be a learnable parameter that will of course add complexity computational complexity to the learning process but it will also add flexibility because you could imagine that you have multiple of these units of these leaky units some of them are not forgetting information easily some of them learns to forget information easily so the diversity of the multiple units if you have a layer with multiple of these units the diversity of the mechanisms that they learn can allow you to capture the different time scales right now things could be could become even more interesting than this as we'll discuss from the next video you could have what's known as gates and the decision to forget or remember the past values can be a dynamic decision meaning that a data-driven dynamic decision that you can learn from the input what are the values that are important to keep and what are the values that you should forget easily and the same, you could have multiple of these units in a layer so that the diversity can allow you to learn different time scales at the same time. Thank you.